I had to take my truck into the body shop, um, gotten in a little accident, but while it was there, I've been borrowing my buddy's car. Uh, it's a Toyota Prius. And, <laughs> you know, you guys, if you follow us on social media, have probably seen the pictures, but um, actually had to put the dough on the roof of the Toyota Prius. And it happened to be the second one that the, the fall obsession staff had done that week. So, you know, just by coincidence, we had two deer on top of Toyota Prius this, this or that week. So, oh, you got her, dude. She's down. Dude, I just shot a deer of a lifetime. Freaking smoked him. One with nature, and if you're a believer, one with God. Definitely gets your heart pumping. Boy, you are in trouble. Fall Obsession Podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Fall Obsession Podcast episode podcast is driven by Ridge Rock Hunt Company. I'll talk more about them later. You got both of your podcast hosts on here for this week's episode, myself and our uh, Fall Obsession Vice President and our Northern Podcast host, Drew Tordick. Welcome back, Drew. Hey, thanks, Sam. Well, always a good time to get to sit down and and hang out with you, man. It's always, I don't know, they're spread out enough that I can always say it's been a minute (laughs) since, uh, since we did it last, but um want to take a little bit of time this week to catch up with you see what's been going on in your world and hunting seasons up north and everything up there and then uh also i know we have some new listeners uh that have been tuning in with us this past couple months with carbon tv platform and all that kind of stuff so kind of wanted to give them a little bit of an introductory to to fall obsession and some of the cool stuff that we're that we're doing around here um during these times so i think a good one to start with as far as uh some stuff that we're working on right now, some projects we got going is one that you have, uh, kind of taken the lead on and, and put a lot of time into. And that is, uh, our BCE or best Christmas ever fundraiser that we have going on, uh, this holiday season. So you want to give us just a brief outlook on that real quick? Yeah. Uh, so best Christmas ever is a charity organization that was started here in Northern Minnesota, um, 11 years ago now. Um, their main goal is to provide, a best Christmas experience for a family who's experienced some hard times due to no fault of their own. So, you know, whether it's medical issues or death in the family or, you know, anything else that really sets somebody back for the year where they might not have that opportunity to have a traditional Christmas, it BCE steps in, um, provides gifts for the family as well as what we call a life changing donation or life changing gift. Um, basically it's a, it's a large value gift. Um, it's kind of dependent on the family as far as what that covers, but it's, it's a pretty awesome deal. That's awesome. So what, what are we trying to do as as fall obsession to, to contribute and be a part of this this year? Yeah, absolutely. So the family that we chose as fall from fall obsession uh, really connects with our, our goal of, you know, supporting veterans and also you doing what we can for, to help with them. Um, So this year we chose a family. uh, It's a mom and three daughters who had a, a father that, um, you know, was a veteran, um, was experiencing some difficult PTSD symptoms and, you know, the VA cut off his medical benefits for some reason or another. I'm not exactly sure on the details. And, you know, unfortunately he, he decided that, you know, it was, it was too difficult of a thing for himself to deal with. And so now it's the mom and the three daughters that are, are facing this Christmas alone for the first time this year. Yeah. So we're, we as Fall Obsession, um, we're, we're working, as you said, to, to raise those donations that you specified a, a few moments ago and everything. Where can, where can folks go to help contribute to that? And what kind of timeline do they have to be involved in such? Yeah, absolutely. So we have set up, it's called a Kindful Donation page. Uh, we have the link posted on our website. Um, we also have been sharing it on our social media pages as well. Um, Basically, you go to that Kindful donation page. You can make a tax-deductible donation through um, BC itself. Um, you know, Fall Obsession isn't a charitable organization, so we can't offer that tax benefit. But in working with BCE, they're able to provide that that benefit to anybody who wants to contribute. Um, additionally, we've set up an Amazon wish list for the family that has all of the gifts that um, we call them the nominator, but the person who who suggested that this family get the help this year. So the nominator and myself have worked together to put together 
an Amazon wish list, and we have that link available as well. Yeah. So like like Drew said, go to our social media pages, our website, fallobsession.com. All those are locations where you guys can uh, find the links to this this donation page. And there's there's no is there a minimum amount that people have to give? Or... No, there's no minimum amount at all. Um, it will ask you uh, if you want to leave a message and, you know, say some positive notes, some positive words of encouragement. Um, it'll also ask you if you want to cover the, um, I guess it's the the fees associated with it. So, you know, that's up to you. It's, it's really no big deal. Whatever you choose to donate will really help the family out. Yeah. And, and on there, I mean, you guys can see the, the kind of donations we've gotten small, little, as, as small as like $10 and as much as, as, as several hundred dollars. And, you know, I, I don't want to turn this podcast into us asking for money or anything like that. It's not about that, but, um, it's, it's something that we're, that we're passionate about as Drew has already said, and that we we're trying to be involved in and give back to, to a community and a family specifically in need. Um, so if you guys, if you guys find it upon yourselves to help out with that this holiday season, um, and you want it to go to, uh, an insured good cause, then, um, head on over to fallobsession.com and, or our social media pages, and we'll take you there and you can help out. So. It, yeah. And that, that's not something that we benefit from besides right. like the, the charitable giving part of it. We're not seeing any of those donations that goes, all of that goes directly to the family. So that's, it's very good. Yeah, absolutely. Well, man, um, let's get into some some hunting talk. What has been going on up in Minnesota this year? Because we really haven't, I don't think we've really talked to you a whole lot since your season has been off and, and running for a while um, as far as your your hunting adventures and stuff out there. So what what's it like up there at the moment? Sure. Uh, so, you know, in some of the po- past podcasts, we've talked about how we converted a bunch of agricultural land to that CRP. Um, it's it's been awesome. We've seen so much more animal activity, whether it's pheasants, whether it's deer, even turkeys now are hanging out pretty frequently. Um, so I've spent a lot of time in the stand, um, done a lot of pheasant hunting. This is by far the year, or like the best year I've had in the stand as far as the number of deer I've seen, uh, the number of deer I've actually passed on just, you know, knowing that there's bigger deer around and hoping I might get a chance at them. Um, you know, there's been days in the stand where I've seen 10, 15 deer and in past years, that's that's all I would see in a season. Um, so it's it's been really great. We've had the opportunity to have some family come in and do some pheasant hunting on that land. And you know, in the past, that would have just been tilled up and just kind of black dirt, and not worth hunting. Um, and uh, you know, we went out on that pheasant trip, and the first time through that field, I think we kicked out 16 pheasants from that one. It's got to be 65 acres, um, which we don't see those kind of numbers usually around there at all. Um, that day they happen to be all hens. Um, but opening day of deer season, I was sitting in my blind and looking at this tree and all of a sudden I noticed there was roosters flying to it and it started off with two of them in the tree. And the next thing you knew, I had 17 roosters in this tree, a hundred yards from me, which I've never seen that before. And I, I got some pictures and some video of it and it, it was pretty cool. That's awesome, man. Very cool. So you, have you filled any tags? Uh, yeah, I shot two doe. Um, the first one was the last weekend of our gun season here, um, right in the middle of some snow that was coming down. Um, had seen quite a few deer. Uh, I'd really held off on shooting does up until that point, just in the hopes that they'd be attracting the bucks to the area. Um, and that evening, a lone doe walked out, and she was pretty big, and so I decided to take her. And then, uh, actually, last weekend, I was up there for our muzzleloader season, and shot another doe uh that one was that one was good too uh you know i i had to take my truck into the body shop um gotten in a little accident but while it was there i've been borrowing my buddy's car uh it's a toyota prius and (laughs) you know you guys if you follow us on social media have probably seen the pictures but um actually had to put the doe on the roof of the toyota prius and it happened to be the second one that the the fall obsession staff had done that week so you know just by coincidence we had two deer on top of toyota prius this this or that week so i was going to address that because uh yeah like drew said if you've been following us you will have seen this new trend that apparently i don't know i don't know if we're starting it or jumping on it or or what's going on here but we for whatever reason yeah 
the the stars aligned and two of our guys had to put a deer on top of a prius uh last week so and, and i don't know if we've talked about it on the podcast or not but so you were one of them nick down here on texas dirt he was the other one that put a deer on top of his prius uh this last week and i don't think i don't, don't even remember if uh, nick talked about it on the deer camp podcast last week but uh, i'll hit on it real quick he was the following day i know he didn't because this was the following day um he was leaving the property to head home after the morning hunt my dad and i were staying to get one more hunt in before we headed home and he was pulling out the front gate and one of the oil well guys that frequently comes in to check on the oil well sites on the property he was coming in so at the gate nick rolled down his window and at you know just to talk to him real quick and guy looks at his car and he's like hey man are you the are you the guy that was driving through town last night with a deer on top of your prius <laughs> and nick's like yeah why he goes oh man you're famous in town <laughs> So apparently several people um, observed him going through town around 8 p.m. that night going to the processor. And then uh, later on, we discovered that the processor had actually taken a picture of that car and posted it on their Facebook page as well. So word was getting around that somebody was hunting in that area with a with a Toyota Prius. So, (laughs) yeah, yeah, I definitely got some looks on the drive home Uh, for me. It's a it's a four hour round trip. So. Uh, the Prius, I guess, was pretty nice in saving some gas money on the multiple trips up there. But, you know, leaving the property, I got a couple of guys that had been hunting that drove by that gave me the thumbs up. And then <laughs> and the I got to the metro and the more I was in the city limits, uh, those looks turned to a little bit more confusion and a little bit, you know, people were really interested to see that. So that was, that was kind of my experience. I uh, showed up at the processor and, you know, even the processor here had something to say about it. And said, you know. I think his exact comment was, you're not married, are you? <laughs> uh, yeah, he said most people that have small cars like that are bringing them in on the in the inside of the car in the trunk. But he said it made more way more sense to not get blood and stuff in the car to have it on top. Yeah. Uh, yeah, why not? One, one or the other, man. Come on. <laughs> I got to tell you, though, I am a little bit of jealous of Nick seeing seeing him lift that Texas, or Texas deer up. Looked a lot easier than than the 105 110 pound deer that i had to lift up yeah so. well i mean his his deer was it, it was every bit of all there he uh it wasn't a baby for sure for for a texas whitetail she was one of the bigger does actually that we've taken you know nick is just yeah. obviously that strong of a gentleman so he uh you know he was <laughs> able to handle it but um no I, I think i think part of it too for him was uh was a pride thing because ever since he uh he sold his truck over the summer and bought that prius to save on some fuel mileage to and from work and and uh just with the market for pickup trucks you know here recently it was a good opportunity for him to move on from it and uh ever since that the firehouse you know he's been getting a hard time mainly about hey what are you gonna do come deer season when when you're out there and you got a toyota prius and he's been living up to it like hey man i'm gonna make it work i'm gonna make it work and uh so I, I think part of that was uh was the reason he was adamant on doing that was hey i gotta i gotta prove all those people at work wrong who uh who said that i would be struggling so <laughs> yeah yeah and, and you know the gas mileage is awesome um filling up the tank for 10 bucks 15 bucks rather than 85 90 bucks for the truck it's it's made a huge difference as far as the number of trips that i've been able to make this fall oh yeah i uh i bought me a little commuter car over the summer as well to to save me some money and fuel because i i couldn't we moved this last summer farther away from my work and it only took a couple trips to work in my in my diesel pickup that i was like no i i can't keep doing this i did not sell the truck though and buy a car i kept the truck and bought a car so i still got a pickup truck at least <laughs> but no, it's been fun. We 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 got some uh, some cool little adventures and and some uh, some content that's that's pretty humorous like that here recently, which which is enjoyable for sure um, to see that kind of stuff coming in. So I don't know, maybe somebody else will will jump on the bandwagon and uh, or maybe it inspires somebody. Maybe somebody's like, hey, you know what? Those guys, those fall obsession guys, were able to hunt with a Prius. I can go out there and get it done. I mean, as long as you can get to your stand, man. Where there's a will, there's a way. So. Yep. Yep. Just make sure you bring a couple of ratchet straps, put yeah. them through the back windows. It seemed to, it seemed to hold fine. And I had a two hour drive home, so it didn't move at all. So yeah, I mean, it was... Nick's drive wasn't anything like that, but I, I was impressed. And, and I'm, I'm talking about him a lot for him not being on the podcast here with us, but, um, he, when it came time to put that deer on top, he, uh, 
he busted open the back end of that Prius and lifted up whatever secret compartment he's got back there. And there was ratchet straps and all sorts of tactical tools and everything that you'd need to survive in the wilderness. So he may be driving a Prius, but at least he's prepared for the apocalypse. So, <laughs> yep. uh, so kind of moving on, um, do you still have buck tags up there or, or what's left of your season? Yeah, I got, well, so Minnesota works kind of in, I don't know if it's a weird way or a strange way, but we have all these different zones and depending on what zone you're in, you're, you're limited to anywhere from one to five deer. The statewide bang limit is five deer. It used to be unlimited if you shot them in the Metro. Um, but they recently, two years ago, switched that back to, uh, to five only. So, um, you know, I've shot two. I can still shoot a buck up at the farm if I want to, or anywhere else in the state. I've got technically three more deer that I could shoot. Um, our muzzleloader season ends on the 11th, so that'll be what next Monday. Yeah. It'll be over, yeah. um, and then for the rest of the year it's archery only. So, gotcha. So you intend on spending some more time out there, or are you you going to be wrapping it up? Um, I'll probably spend some more time out there. We've seen some good deer movement the last couple of weeks. Um, they had kind of hunkered down following gun season, but they're kind of back on their feet now. Uh, the snow really has them out moving around and we're supposed to get some more of it here soon. So, gotcha. Yeah. yeah that's a, uh, that's something that we don't normally have to deal with down here is, is the snow. <laughs> it's yeah. actually been, uh, I'm ready for it to get cold and stay cold. We're getting these cold fronts and everything that, that come through and, but then it just warms right back up. So like, um, last week it was cold toward the end of the week and then over the weekend it got back up into the the mid 70s as the high every day and now starting today it's starting to drop back down but then um after next weekend there's going to be a spike again which thankfully it's after the weekend because we have our veteran hunt coming up uh this upcoming weekend at the time of recording here um so we'll at least have some cooler weather for that but i'm ready for it to get to get cold and stay cold because texas is bipolar when it comes to comes to weather so <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I've been there. I was surprised how cold it was when we were there. You know, I was expecting to be in Texas and every other time I've been there, it was nice and warm. And that one trip that we had that staff hunt was, it was pretty cold that week. Yeah. It, it'll get to a point where, where it gets down there and, and I'm ready for it just at this point. Cause it seems like every time that I've gotten to get out and hunt has been when it's been warm, which is obviously a time when the deer activity is, is at an all time low. And it's, it's kind of funny cause you know, I, I hunt on Texas dirt with Nick and, and both of our dads are on the lease as well. And my dad will go out there pretty much every time that I go out there and, and hunt, but then I'll come back. I got to go back to work and my dad, he'll typically, he's done it twice to me this season already. He'll send me a text and he'll be like, well, you may have to go back to work, but I'm self-employed, so I'm going back out there while it's cold. <laughs> and every time he's done that, he's gone out there and killed deer. So he's got uh, he's got one more one more in the freezer than I do this year already. So he's been doing pretty good. Yeah. So that that veteran hunt um, that that's pretty exciting deal. That I think this year we saw way more applications. Than we have in the past um it was actually a pretty difficult decision to make this year we had a lot of people that really stuck out a lot of great stories um it, it was difficult to choose um and i know that that's not an easy process for us normally but it was even more difficult this year with the number of applicants and the number of good stories that we had come in yeah it's uh it, it was a challenging a challenging decision uh this year for sure so backing up just a little bit for anybody who might be in that group of new listeners for fall obsession um we this is the second year now that we've been able to do it and we wouldn't be able to do it if it weren't for um waylon langford who is our who's the hunt host who's actually providing uh the property for us to be able to host this hunt on but we're we do a we call it our, our veteran hunt giveaway that we've done two years in a row now um, where it's almost like an, an application slash nomination that, that you fill out, um, either for yourself or if you know a veteran who has, uh, who you believe is deserving of a hunt like this, a whitetail hunt in Texas, that is, um, you can fill it out and nominate them and everything. So the nominations closed last month and we, uh, we selected our winner. As Drew said, it was a very, very difficult, uh, decision because there's so many people that just stood out and that are doing, uh, good things for, for veterans or their local community or, um, 
yeah, that, that just, we, that we want to take on a hunt like this. We wish we could take all of them, you know, we really do, but, um, only can take one. So, um, when it came, and even Waylon, uh, I was talking to him the other day and he, he boiled it down for me. He's like, man, even, even when we narrowed it down to, to our top candidates, you know, for, for the final decision, he goes and everything, he goes, I had a hard time picking. He said, because everything was just, they were all, all deserving of something like this in, in his mind and everything. So, um, but at, at the end of the day, Mr. Mr. Mike Demshock is, is our winner for this year, and he's going to be joining us uh, actually day after tomorrow at the time we're recording this podcast is when uh, I'll be picking him up and we'll be heading out there for our uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday weekend hunt. And what you guys as our listeners have to look forward to is at least right now it's my intention that over this weekend I'm going to record a podcast with him and Waylon, our hunt host, um, in Deer Camp. So next week's podcast episode you guys will get to listen to is actually going to be from um, that hunt with those gentlemen talking about um, not only that experience but also Mike and kind of his um, his experience as, as a veteran. And then one thing that he has done is, has done a lot of work to help other veterans with their VA process and, and benefits and stuff like that, which is really, really awesome. So more to come on that and a lot of content coming in the next month to our pages, uh, around this hunt around Mr. Mike. And I'm looking forward to sharing a camp with him. I know last year when we took, uh, last year's winner Mark Zorich out there it was uh it was an incredible weekend and honestly I, and I've said this on the podcast and I've said this to Mark before too I, I didn't know what to expect last year because it was the first year we were doing it you know it's always kind of kind of nerve-wracking when you're doing something for the first time in in a hunting environment like that and then you're you're hunting with somebody you've never even met before um you don't really know what to expect but Mark and I had a last year had a three hour drive out to the property from the airport and we had a lot of time to to talk and get to know each other and everything and it ended up being just absolutely an incredible weekend. You guys can go back and watch the video from last year's uh, last year's hunt on our My Obsession series. It's episode one. Um, Mark actually kicked off that My Obsession series that we're running right now with that episode and then I think it's podcast ninety. I want to say was our episode from from last year where we recapped that hunt with with mark unfortunately didn't get it in deer camp but uh i followed up with him later and we recorded an awesome podcast on that so that's something i'm looking forward to also because the in-person podcast sitting down with somebody face to face one-on-one that's my favorite way of, of recording and you know producing this kind of content so i'm looking forward to actually doing that like i said in deer camp this time with uh with these gentlemen so yeah yeah i mean you mentioned it um but, you know, that was one thing that impressed me the most. I mean, we obviously are very appreciative of all of the, the service that the veterans have put in. Um, but this year's group, especially the number of applicants that came in that were involved in helping other veterans yeah. was so impressive to me that, I mean, that was that was pretty eye opening is it, it's such a, a self-supporting community. I think that was pretty impressive. Yeah. This is something I know after last year, we, there was a little bit of uncertainty and question on if we'd be able to to do it again, and if so, where. And very grateful again for Waylon and, and the opportunity to host that again down here in Texas. But I think especially after seeing those applicants and seeing the, the nominations for the gentlemen that were, that were in the running this year, um, th- this is something that we at Fall Obsession are going to strive to do every year, whether it's down here in Texas or, or at a, an alternate location, whatever the case might be. Because, uh, again, for us, hunting is more than just being a, a media production company and producing our own content. It, it, there's so many opportunities that we are trying to take advantage of to give back to communities, veterans, those who have served, and, and that sort of thing. And, and this is one big way that we, we found a love for doing it, if you will, through the form of a whitetail hunt. So um, mark your calendars for next fall, because whether it's down here in Texas or somewhere else, we are going to make it a point to try and do this every single year. So if you miss the, if you miss the boat this year, or even if you were, uh, if you nominated somebody and um, your nomination was not the one chosen, then apply next year man there there is there's going to be more opportunities and i'm excited for it so yeah and you mentioned there's going to be more opportunities and more locations i mean i I mean this is something i feel comfortable talking about now i've i've cleared it with you know all my uncles and 
the ownership group of back at the farm and you know it's it's something that they're open and receptive to opening up the farm in minnesota as well for another veteran hunt so whether that's something that we do in conjunction with the texas hunt or in addition to it or as a standalone thing uh i think that's something that we're going to open up next year as well so yeah yeah so plenty of room to expand and and um we'll also be probably before next year trying to on the preparation side maybe work with some more some more companies in the industry to to make this hunt all that we can so um yeah more to come on that that aspect stay tuned so it's a it's a good thing good thing that we got going and uh i'm looking forward as i've already said to this upcoming weekend and being back in veteran hunt camp it'll be fun so man uh what else you got we it seems like we've been pretty busy over here at fall obsession with uh with a bunch of stuff that we got going on obviously our podcast uh is a thing that keeps on keeps on chugging along but um you know, our, our staff is knocking down deer left and right. I know we talked about that with Todd, our staff manager, a few podcast episodes ago, but, um, you know, what, what else we got going on around here right now? Um, so I know that there's, we got some staffers who are getting excited about a a crane hunt down in Texas. Yeah. Um, me personally, I'm, I'm really excited. We got some pheasant hunts coming up here in Minnesota. Um, also, after the first of the year is usually when I start guiding and going to the game farm here, um, doing that kind of work. And, you know, I'm excited for that season. That's usually for me, January through, um, May, I guess, April, then April. So, um, get out and do a lot of pheasant hunting then and connect with some pretty great people doing that. That's awesome. Yeah. That pheasant hunt is something that you, I know you're pretty passionate about and that you seem to put a lot of effort into every year. So it's always awesome to see the results from that. It's good stuff. Yeah. I'm actually pretty excited. We got Todd and Heather Sellen coming in from Michigan this year. They're coming up to Minnesota. It's going to be the last week of the season here. Uh, so the birds have kind of seen every trick in the book at that point. Yeah. And it's going to be a little tougher hunt, but I'm really excited. They've got a dog who's never been on wild birds. Um, so, you know, it'll be cool to get them out and yeah. get them on. That'd be fun, man. You talk about two people that are some of the most obsessed people I have with with hunting and everything involved those two are are committed and and i admire their ability to just be able to hey let's go hunt with drew or todd this summer hey uh when can i come down there shoot a pig or or he wanted to come down here just to just to meet me hang out and record podcasts and stuff and the pig hunt ended up being a bonus but still they uh they just they will pack up and go for anything hunting and it's awesome yeah it's true uh I'm always impressed with the the number of times that they send out pictures. We've got a group text between all the staffers and, you know, the number of days that they're out hunting and out in the outdoors and even some of the other conversations related to hunting that go on. They're always involved and always thinking about it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's awesome to see. So I love, I love seeing that drive from our staff and I, I always, I always compliment the Midwestern crew out there for, for their involvement with fall obsession and everything. So we always, we always see some good content and again, kind of throwing this out here for new podcast listeners, but, um, we, we have all these staff members across the country and pro or field staff capacities. And, um, they're part of what drives a lot of content on, on our pages. We try to, um, give these folks the opportunity to produce content relevant to their areas, which in turn are your areas where you guys hunt. So that's a, that's a big part of our platform at fall obsession is, is having content in all of these different avenues and all these different, uh, from all of these different places relevant to the areas that you hunt and the animals that you hunt. So, um, allows us to have that kind of diversity on our pages because I'm from Texas. I've hunted outside of the state of Texas twice in my life. So, um, you know, I, I can't, uh, I can't provide a lot of knowledge in, in a lot of areas. So it's always good to have those experts in those different, different regions. So, yeah, you know, and for all the people who are coming in to this podcast, it's kind of new, um, from the carbon TV app, it's something that we are always kind of looking for new staff members. Um, especially, you know, we're looking to fill out that Western region, um, especially the Northwestern region. It'd be awesome to have a few more people from there. So if you're listening from there and, love hunting as much as we do we've got an application process on our website that you can go check out yeah absolutely yeah we're to to drive that point home our our regions are divided we've 
split up our our country if you will into um five different regions the western being kind of the the rocky mountain line and everything pushing west of that and uh we we really want again these these content creators in those areas to to bring that value and that experience to our pages and everything um and we we've brought structure in our own company to to have a coordinator you know over each of those regions and everything and tim burgess is our our western regional coordinator and i know i know he would love to to get some more people set up over there in in his area and 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 we would as well as we've said so um yeah go to fallobsession.com and uh fill out an application if you're from the west and uh you like producing outdoor content so be good to have you well, man, what else can we hit on before we wrap it up? It's hunting season. We're all busy, and uh, I, I know uh, I, I know I've talked about t- my experiences in tex- on Texas dirt here several times in the podcast. Uh, people are probably tired of hearing about that. But on that note, too, while I'm talking about Texas dirt, I do want to say I know we've been holding a lot of our uh, – our episodes in our editing room and and again part of that is attributed to the busy time of year and us uh us kind of constantly being on the go but um the week that this episode is airing you guys can expect uh, i think i'm gonna call it our, our texas dirt marathon we're gonna be dropping several new texas dirt episodes this week alone and uh and that's gonna kind of help catch you up on on the whitetail management strategies and stuff that we have going on down here and then the actual hunts themselves I'm looking forward to some of these episodes that y'all are going to see because um, we do have some pretty cool footage of actual actual kills and stuff uh, on camera now too. So um, if you guys are unfamiliar with the series, Texas Dirt, it's a whitetail management series. It's it's my uh, kind of my baby down here um, in Texas, myself and our production director, Nick Powell. It's talking about our, our management strategies and our techniques and stuff that we're using on this whitetail property that last year... Um, we got on down here in Texas last year with season one properties never been hunted before we're starting from scratch so if you want to learn a little bit about starting from scratch the hard way in uh, in Texas then you can go watch us struggle through this series but we're filming season two right now we'll be dropping some new episodes very soon they will be on the YouTube channel go subscribe turn those notifications on and they will also be streaming on carbon tv like the like our podcast so you can check them out on either one of those avenues so you got anything else drew uh no not right now awesome well i will uh a shorter episode i know but i will take it to uh to conclusion i appreciate you guys listening to another fall obsession podcast As we already said on that YouTube series and YouTube in general, go hit that follow and subscribe button there on YouTube. Notifications turned on. We publish multiple new videos every week. Um, Trying to get more content relevant to the actual hunts and everything. And like I said, this Texas Dirt series on there. But our our podcasts are also on there as well. The podcast videos, um, we publish them on the YouTube channel as well. So you can go check them out on there all of our social media platforms facebook instagram twitter go wild um go follow subscribe like do all the the good stuff on there and uh we we post daily on those pages as well with that hunting and outdoor content relevant to your areas as we already mentioned earlier fallobsession.com is our website that's the hub all of our content runs through there and that's where you guys can go and explore around and find us covering literally hundreds of different topics at this point in the hunting and outdoor industry Um, video series, gear reviews, wild game recipes, educational videos, and articles, podcasts. We got it all on there. So head over to fallobsession.com and explore. Um, There is still time if you're listening to this podcast when it first came out to get your Christmas orders in if you want to get some hunting and outdoor apparel for for those Christmas gifts or stocking stuffers, whatever it might be. We still have uh, some items left that are that are in high demand at right now, including our new leather patch hat that we just came out with. Got a couple of those left, but order before December 15th if you want to be sure that you get it before Christmas. So last but not least, Ridge Rock Hunt Company, podcast partner, Derek and Lacey over there in Mississippi. They do a great job of uh, booking hunts and setting folks up with vetted and trusted outfitters across the country. So if you're looking for... Um, that next hunting adventure that you might have been saving up for or trying to figure out where you even start, where you even go, 
give Derek a call, even if it is just to learn where you might go and how you get started. He will help you with that, help you with dates, costs, licensing, the whole process. Uh, he's a great guy over there and um, takes some pride in his work and pride in setting you up with a, a good experience. So Ridge Rock Hunt Company, check out their website and their social medias. Drew, did I miss anything? Uh, no, just, I guess anybody listening to this, if you haven't yet, go, go donate to our family for BCE and that, that it, just like you'd mentioned, December 15th, December 16th is our deadline for that. So, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Head on over again on fallobsession.com and our social media pages. It should be all over that and you guys will be able to find it and, uh, take you directly to that donation page. If you, or uh, a company or business that you own or know, uh, might be interested as well. Like Drew said, it's that tax write-off. So head on over there and uh, send in your donation. All right, guys. Thank you all for listening. Next week, look forward to it. Veteran Hunt Podcast. And we will catch you then.